So our next invited talk is um, Xia Zhao, uh, who recently got his PhD at Kent University and is currently a research, assistant researcher at the Academy of Military Sciences in China. Um, so Xia will give a talk on GPU Knox and LLC. So whenever you're ready, take it away. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Can you uh, see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Hi everyone. Today I will give a short presentation about our work, redesign GPU knock and LC system. In recent years, the SM count in GPUs keeps increasing. For example, from 40 to 100, the SM count increases from 14 to 108. At the same time, the IOC capacity and memory bandwidth also increases in GPUs. So in this case, how to design a scalable and high-performance NOC and IOC becomes very important in GPUs. As shown in the left part of the slide, the SM oh, um, connects. Yeah, I, I think yes. we only, we don't see the presentation view. Oh. So, wait. Okay. Wait mm, for a moment. So, um, can you see the presentation now? Yes. It works, right? Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, so in recent years, the SM count in GPUs keeps increasing. For example, from 40 to A100, SM count increases from 14 to 108. As shown in the left part of the figure, the SMs connect to the LLCs and the memory controllers through the NOC. So in this talk, I will describe how to design a scalable and high-performance NOC and LLC in modern GPUs. This talk consists of three parts. First, I will give a presentation about our hierarchical NOC design for GPUs. Next is the adaptive GPU LLC design. And finally, I will talk about the selective replication in GPU LLC. Let's look at the first one. In GPUs, the NOC network on chip connects SMs to the LC slices. For example, there are many SMs and few LC slices in GPUs. GPUs, this is a unique traffic pattern named many to few to many, and the communication only exists between SMs and the LC slices. In GPUs, the SM count are usually more than the LC slice count. So this gives us the key observation. In GPUs, because the SM count are more than the SM count, uh, the SM count are more than the LC slice count. So typically, not all links are utilized in a full crossbar. As shown in the figure, the X axis are the applications and the Y axis are the number of fleets transferred in the NOC per cycle. In this example, we consider a GPU with 80 SMs and 16 LC slices. As shown in the figure, the number of fleets transferred in the NOC is less than 16. This is because there are only 16 LC slices in the GPU system, so the fleet count cannot be more than 16. This, because the SM count is more than the LC slice count, so actually there is no need to connect SMs to the LCs directly. And this motivates our design CDX bar architecture. In CDX bar, it's the converged diverse crossbar architecture. In CDX bar, we have two types of crossbars, the L crossbar and the G crossbar. We use L crossbar to connect the SMs 
to a limited number of converged ports. And we use G crossbar to connect the converged ports to the LC slices. In this case, by using the converged port, we first, the converged ports can provide the routing path diversity. So it gives us high performance. For example, the SMs um, connecting to one L crossbar can use different converged ports to send the packets to the J crossbar. This actually gives the path diversity. And secondly, the, uh, the converted ports bridge the gap between SMs and LC slices. This gives us the high area and power efficiency because we break a big fully connected crossbar into, uh, I mean, several small crossbars like the L crossbar and the G crossbar. Based on the CDX bar architecture, we explore different routing algorithms like the oblivious routing, adaptive routing, and the round robin routing. In our work, we found that the round robin routing has the highest performance with the lowest hardware cost. In the CDX bar architecture, we also explore different CTE scheduling policies like the round robin CTE scheduling and the topology aware CTE scheduling. The round robin scheduling policy does not consider the network on chip architecture and do the CT scheduling like the baseline GPU or traditional GPU. At the same time, topology aware CT scheduling assigns CTAs based on the location of the SMs. So, in this case, it brings much higher performance compared to the round robin scheduling. The details are in the TC paper. Before I talked about to bridge the gaps between the SMs and the LC slice count, we can use the hierarchical knock design and we propose the CDX bar architecture. I gave a brief introduction about the CDX bar design and also the routing policy, CT scheduling policy in CDX bar. Next, I will talk about the adaptive GPU LLC design. The GPUs usually use the shared LLC because the latency is not that important in GPUs. GPUs have high, a very high level of thread level parallelism to hide the memory access latency. So it usually uses the shared LLC to provide the high cache capacity. However, in this work, we found that if multiple SMs or multiple cards want to access the same data in the LLC at the same time, it will cause very serious bandwidth bottleneck. And we also um, we found that some modern GPU applications have have very high level of data sharing. For example, uh, as shown in the right part of the slide, more than sixty percent of the LC lines. Or, catch, uh, or data blocks are shared by different SMs in these applications. This gives us the opportunity to improve the performance by eliminating the bandwidth bottleneck. So in this case, how about the private LLC in GPUs? In the shared, as shown in the, right, uh, in the left hand, as, uh, in the shared LLC, the data only exists one time in the LC system. However, if you use the private LLC, the shared data is replicated across different LC slices. By using the private LLC, you can eliminate the contention because different GPU cards can access different locations of the same data. For example, if the shared LLC have the bandwidth of one cache line per cycle, we use the private LLC and it can provide four cache line per cycle bandwidth. It's clear that private LLC can provide high data bandwidth by replicating the data. However, the LLC capacity also decreases because of the data replication. We show that the private LLC versus shared LLC in GPUs is not the capacity versus the latency like the CPUs. 
actually now it becomes the capacity versus the bandwidth. We found that GPU applications can be divided into three types, the shared cache friendly application, private cache friendly application, and the neural application. For the shared cache friendly application, they mainly care about the cache capacity. So if you use the private IOC design, it can decrease the performance a lot. For the private cache friendly application, they prefer to use the private LLC to do data replication to improve the bandwidth. For the neural application, the, pro the performance does not change between shared LLC and private LLC. This motivates our adaptive caching in GPUs. We need the dynamic technique to select the right configuration at the runtime. We need the online profiling to classify the application's LC demand. I mean, classify the application into the shared friendly, private friendly, or neural applications. In this case, we rely the lightweight performance model to quantify the bandwidth versus the LLC hit rate. To achieve this, we began with the shared LLC. If the private LLC mix rate is similar in the shared LLC, we will transfer to the private LLC. When the private LLC bandwidth is much higher than the shared LLC bandwidth, we also transfer from shared LLC to private LLC. We periodically transfer from the private LLC to shared LLC. The problem is that when the application is executing in shared LLC, how to estimate its private LLC mix rate. To achieve this, we propose the customized auxiliary tag directory to estimate the private LLC hit rate when the application is actually executing in the shared LLC. Details can be found in the paper. We also build a bandwidth model to quantify the private LC bandwidth versus the shared LC bandwidth. Here is the memory system bandwidth model. The memory system bandwidth is the bandwidth of LLC plus the bandwidth of the memory. The bandwidth of the uh, the bandwidth of the LLC is the LC hit rate multiply LSP multiply LC bandwidth. And the bandwidth of the memory is the LC mix rate multiplied the memory bandwidth. The LC bandwidth and memory bandwidth are the peak bandwidth in the GPU system. This is the same for shared and private LLC organization. The LC hit rate and the miss rate is different in private and shared LLC. This can be estimated by using the auxiliary tag directory. The LSP is used to estimate the LLC access parallelism. This is different in private and shared LLC. If the bandwidth in the private LLC is larger than the bandwidth in the shared LLC, we will use the private LLC. Next, next, we will show how to enable the shared LLC configuration in the hierarchical X bar. The hierarchical X bar is similar to the CDX bar. It has two types of routers, the SM router and MC router. SM router connect to a cluster of SMs, and as an MC router connect to, uh, to the one group of LC slices. The SM router and MC router use long links to connect to each other. In this case, each SM can reach each LC slice. This is the shared LC configuration. If we want to configure the LLC into the private LC configuration, we only need to, to bypass the MC router. For example, the red color of SMs have the red color LC slice as the private LLC. The yellow color SMs have, can only access the yellow color LLC. So in this case, the, the, I mean, these memory requests can go to the uh, go through the SM router, reach the MC router, and then 
bypass them the router and access the LC slice directly. In this case, they can have the private LC organization. Since the MC router are bypassed, we can power gate these routers to save the knock power. So our HX bar design can enable the power savings in private mode. Next, I will talk about the catch concurrence in private LLC. GPUs typically use the software guaranteed concurrence. For example, L1 implodes right through policy and it will flush the L1 catch at the boundary. In this case, we extend the software guaranteed concurrence to LLC. We use the LC also employs write through policy and we flush the L1 and the LLC at the boundary when all when the tra transition happens. Next, I will talk about our selective replication in GPU LLC. As shown before, in the shared LLC organization, if multiple SMs want to access the same data, it will cause the contention. And we propose a private LLC to replicate the data across LLC slices and avoid the contention. However, if the shared data set is very large, in this case, a lot of data replication will cause the catch throttling and kick the data out. Thus, the SMs want to access the data. This will cause very serious LLC needs. The problem of the shared LLC is the congestion, and the problem of private LLC is high LLC miss rate because of the data replication. So it is too cost grand. The adaptive LLC is easy, I mean, is either for replication or no replication at all. Here in this work, we propose the selective replication to balance the LLC bandwidth and the capacity. The selective replication can improve the bandwidth while avoiding the catch throttling. So it is robust across different data sizes. As shown in the figure, instead of replicating the data across all the LC slices, in the selective replication, we only replicate the data across a, a couple of LC slices to achieve the balance by, um, to achieve the balance between the LC bandwidth and LC miss rate. Here, I will show an example of the private LLC, shared LLC, and our, rep uh, and our selective, repli uh, selective replication. The x-axis is from average 0 to average 4. It means different shared data size. I mean, from average 0 to average 4, the shared data set size increases. And the y-axis is the normalized performance compared to the best static performance. As shown in the figure, if, you, if the data set is very small, private LLC is very good. However, if you increase the shared data set, the private LLC's performance decreases a lot. The shared LLC is good for the large shared data set. When the shared data set is average for shared LLC has the highest performance. Adaptive LLC achieves the best of both worlds by adaptively choose shared LLC or private LLC. And the selective replication can enable much fine grid control. So it achieves the high performance across shared, different shared data sizes. Selective replication uses compile time analysis to replicate the read-only data. And it also has the runtime support to choose the replication degree online. For example, the compile time analysis identifies the read-only data structure, and then it uses the LD global RO to replace the original LD global in PTX code. In this case, we add a read-only bit to the memory request if it accesses the read-only data area. We also add the runtime support in selective replication 
the changes is added to the MC router. We add the RDB replication degree directory and also the analytical bandwidth model to quantify the bandwidth with the different replication degree. And the changes are very small. Details can be found in the paper. RDB predicts the LC hit rate for different replication degrees. And the bandwidth model predicts which, which replication degree can maximize the bandwidth. Here is a brief summary about my talk. First, I talk about the scalable and high performance hierarchical knock. With the increased number of SMs and LC slices, we need the hierarchical knock to, to achieve the high performance with a low hardware cost. Next, I'll talk about our adaptive LC design to trade off capacity versus bandwidth. In the end, we, I talk about the selective replication to do a fine grained trade off. This is because adapt, adaptive LC is the cost grained trade off. This is the end of my today's talk. I'm ready for some questions. Thanks. All right, thank you. So if anyone has questions, feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat box. Okay, so I'll, I'll start off with one question. Oh wait, we have a question, yay. Um, so can the HX bar be used to support GPU virtualization, perhaps something like the NVIDIA MIG system? And, um, and then there's a question after that. So you can answer this one first. Yes, I think that uh, HX bar can support the GPU virtualization because uh, however, the, virtual, uh, the virtualization must be divided in the group of SMs. It means that uh, you cannot put two applications, I mean, on the SMs connect to one SM router because in this case, they will have, they will have very serious contention. However, if you put the applications into different SMs, it can support the virtualization and avoid the resource contention. Okay. And then next question is, um, in the selective replication design, you are using the read-only bit to allow replication. What if the data is read-only in one kernel and not read-only in another kernel? Yeah, right. Uh, this is a very good question. Actually, if the, I mean, the, uh, because we flashes the L1 and L3 at the boundary of the kernel, and so we only identify the I mean, the data structure as read only. If it is read, read only within one kernel, I mean, in one kernel, we can replicate the data. And in the other kernel, if it becomes the read write data structure, we will not replicate that, I mean, that data structure. OK, thanks. Um, I have one quick follow up question related to MIG. So when you have MIG and you kind of separate the GPUs into like, for example, up to seven of the slices of GPUs, um, there's some level of isolation between them, right? So in your designs, for example, with um, uh, the, the SM router and the MC routers and stuff, um, they're still interconnected. Is there any way that your design can support isolation between the different MIG slices? So you mean the results are isolation in the I mean, yeah so well. so when you virtualize a gpu right you, you're right you, you provide some form of isolation not just with the sms but also with the memory um yeah right. right yeah yeah so yeah this so, is, uh, yeah. yeah yeah i think that uh, if you want if you also want to isolate the memory resources uh you also need to use different i mean uh not only the sm routers you also need to assign MC routers to different type of applications to do the memory resource isolation. It means that, for example, uh, okay, I will show that slide. Here, here. Uh, for example, if you have four memory controllers in the GPUs, 
uh, I mean, you can assign two memory controllers to one application and the other two memory controllers to the other application. In this case, the MC routers are private and also the memory resources oh, are okay. also private. Okay, so, so it's a small change to support isolation. You're right. Great, okay. All right, thank you. So let's thank our speaker. We'll have a virtual clap. <laughs> Um, so we ran a bit over time, but now it's a break. Um, so I guess we could take a short five minute break before we start the next session. Yeah. Okay. So we'll no, return no, back no, at 10.15. Uh, no. Okay. Yep. So we'll return back at around 10.15 for the next session. Oh, I'm using Western time, not Pacific time. <laughs> 1.15 Eastern time. <laughs> 